Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Peter Causey from CBLT. How are you today? I'm very well, Tracy. Thank you for having me. Peter, we were talking just prior to this interview about what's going on with the federal government of Canada and how that's going to impact us in the resource industry. How about we start there? Okay. On April 7th, a federal budget was brought in. The budget is how the government outlines its sources of revenue and how it's going to spend that money over the next year. Uh, it's pretty much guaranteed it'll pass because the NDP and the Liberals have a, a collaboration. They've signed a cooperation agreement. I wanted to take some time and read the budget, figure out how it will impact the mining industry. And there are, apart from all the usual stuff, which we'll ignore, you can read Deloitte's report if you want to see that stuff. Let's talk about the four major impacts on the mining industry. First and foremost, a lot of money for First Nations. $565 million for housing and self-governing First Nations and 184, 100, 845 million over seven years for housing in Inuit communities. This is essential for the mining industry. Unless First Nations are, are settled places, unless they are, um, th there's no chaos. They have housing, they have infrastructure. Until First Nations is taken care of, there can be no successful mining industry in Canada. We need First Nations as a partner, not as an enemy. To date, we've done a really bad job of managing First Nations in our relationships. Capital and increasing housing quality of life is key to the mining industry. There's also $20 million to help Indigenous communities recover from the pandemic. It's kind of vague. 20 million is not a lot of money in the grand scheme of things, but it's important. So let's get First Nations settled. Let's get First Nations as a partner. And this budget is the first step to doing that. Second key thing. This is a headline item that has been touted is 1.5 billion with a B to support critical minerals industry. We don't know what that means yet. We'll have to wait for the uh, regulations and the, the laws to actually come out to put some meat on those bones. But it's a recognition by the federal government that we need to create a domestic critical metal supply chain. We're not going to rely on China because everything that China's buying, they're going to consume themselves. They're not going to be selling us batteries. They're going to use it for their own domestic industry. So Canada has to create its own domestic vertically integrated supply chain. We're starting to see that in a couple of places. Saskatchewan and Quebec are ahead of the curve. But here we have a billion five coming in to support the industry with both infrastructure and access to federal data. I'm going to be curious to see what that means when the actual law comes out. What's access to federal data mean? Third item is a pretty obvious one. We currently have what are called mineral tax credits. You and I commonly call it flow through, Tracy. Uh, flow through is 15% as a federal credit off your income tax for Canadian taxpayers. The new one is for critical minerals. It's up to 30%. So I'm waiting to see the regs that come in to support that. Is that 30 on top of the 15? Is that 30 instead of the 15? If you invest, does the province also match? So you're actually getting a, a over credit back on your income tax? The devil's in the details, but a 30 point credit is pretty large off an investment. That will support the critical metals industry. There are 20 minerals set out on that list. Surprisingly, silver is not deemed a critical mineral, even though without silver, there is no solar panel industry. You can't go green without solar panels. The last item is actually a small item, um, but to me, it's the most important. If we're going to go green, if every car is going to be electric, if everything is rechargeable, we need to be able to get the electricity from here to the point of recharge. And the single biggest user in Ontario of electricity is transmission loss. Now think about that. I forget what the percentage is, but it's a shocking amount of the electricity we generate is lost, either to sound or friction or, or just, uh, tra just transmission loss. So to solve that problem, the federal government has suggested it will spend $70 million to research small modular nuclear reactors. It's the same technology that powers the U.S. nuclear subs. For a government that has avoided nuclear power for years, they, they don't want to talk about it, the liberals, 
They're finally saying, yes, we will put in these small modular reactors across Canada. And that's how you avoid the transmission loss problem. And that's how you fund the electricity. They're also going to put $50 million into a regulatory fund so we can regulate these reactors as they get developed. So those four items greatly affect Canada's uh, mining industry. I'm waiting for the actual uh, regulatory documents and the regulations to flesh those out. But in my view, those are the four mining takeaways from the federal budget from April 7th. Well, that leads me to the next obvious question, which is how will CBLT shareholders be impacted positively from all this news? Good question. We won't get into uranium. We've been offered a few uranium properties. Our skill set is not in uranium. Uh, we will benefit, though, from the, the $1.5 billion critical minerals as we are in cobalt and we are in lithium, both of which are on the critical minerals list. So I'm waiting for the regulations to come out to see how we can access some of that money. We'll certainly benefit from the 30% MTC or the flow through. Uh, when we go to our investors, there's an enhanced credit to them for the monies that we spend researching the properties. And as you've seen from recent press releases, we're pretty eager to get back in the field and attack our lithium property in Manitoba in the Bird River Pegmatite field. And of course, any money that goes to First Nations is money well spent. We have great relationships with First Nations. We intend to continue that. And anything that we can do to help improve quality of life at First Nations, we will do. Well, Peter, that was a brilliant summary of takeaway from the federal budget here in Canada. Thank you so much. And we are going to have you join us again in about two months to get an update on how this is actually uh, affecting all of us directly. Thank you. You're very welcome. Looking forward to it.